Drivers are inhaling cancer-causing chemicals. Your car may actually be toxic. Now, electric cars might be good for the environment, but are they actually toxic to us? Well, maybe it's all cars. And a recent study found that drivers are inhaling cancer-causing chemicals in their cars. These toxic chemicals used as flame retardants in newer cars that can cause brain fog, irritability, hormonal imbalance, and a host of other health issues, including cancer. Even worse, there have been tests that confirm that up to 250 other toxic chemicals inside most cars, even the environmentally friendly cars, have the potential to be toxic. Now this means your brand new electric car or most cars under four years old could be poisoning you every time you take a drive. Now this study shows even cars that are nine years old or older show off gassing from these toxic flammable retardants. Drivers and passengers are breathing in potentially cancer-causing chemicals while in their cars. And this new study found that organophosphate ester flame retardants were detected in the cabin air of 101 vehicles tested. And that indicated a route for human exposure to chemicals that could potentially cause cancer just in the cabin itself, which is where you sit. The study, published May 7th in the Environmental Science and Technology Journal, analyzed cabin air of 101 electric, gas, and hybrid cars across 30 states with model years 2015 to 2022. Researchers found that 99% of the cars contained a flame retardant called TCIPP, which is currently under investigation from the U.S. National Toxicology Program as a potential carcinogen. Now, additionally, most cars also have two or more flame retardants considered carcinogenic, TDCIPP and TCEP. You can look it up. I'll put that in the description down below because there's a lot of acronyms here. Considering the average driver spends about an hour in their car every day, this is a significant public health issue, said Rebecca Hone, lead researcher and toxicology scientist at Duke University, said in the release. And quote, it's particularly concerning for drivers with long commutes as well as child passengers who breathe more more air pound for pound than adults. According to the study, levels of toxic flame retardants were also higher in the summer as heat increases the release of the chemicals from the car materials, then fills up the cabin, and then we breathe it. Now, the source in the cancer-causing compounds in the cabin air is from seat foam, researchers said. Flame retardants have been added to seat foam to meet requirements from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, the Federal Motor Vehicle Safety Standard 302, which was adopted in the 70s. And even then, it has not been updated even today. Firefighters are concerned that flame retardants contribute to the very high cancer rates. Filling products with these harmful chemicals does little to prevent fires for most uses and instead makes the blaze smokier and more toxic to their victims and especially to first responders, said Patrick Morrison, Director of Health, Safety and Medicine for the Internal Association of Firefighters. He said that in a recent release that I urge the U.S. National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, known as NHTSA, to update their flammability standard to meet without flame retardant chemicals inside vehicles. That would be the best solution to not use these flame retardant chemicals at all. But researchers insist that these toxic flame retardants serve no real benefit inside the vehicle. And again, firefighters back that up. Lydia Jahl, study author and senior scientist for the Green Science Policy Institute, said people may be able to reduce their exposure to the toxic flame retardants by opening their car windows and parking them in the shade or in garages. But what's really needed is reducing the amount of flame retardants being added to these cars in the first place, she said. Commuting to work shouldn't come with a cancer risk, and children shouldn't breathe the chemicals that, cut, that could possibly harm their brains on their way to school. Now, what about that new car smell? It comes from a mix of chemicals called volatile organic compounds, or VOCs. These compounds come from the materials used in the car's interior, things like plastics and adhesives and fabrics. And when a car is fresh off the assembly line, these materials release gases, a process known as off-gassing. And if these gases that create the distinct new car aroma smell good, well, it's actually VOCs. Some of the VOCs include formaldehyde, toluene, and benzene. And while they contribute to that fresh car scent, they're not exactly great for your health in high concentrations. Studies have shown that they cause headaches, dizziness, and even respiratory issues for some people. What's more, Forbes reported earlier this year that today's new car smell contains cancer-causing carcinogens. Now, this is according to a cited Beijing study. New SUVs had extra high concentrations of risky chemicals on hot days. Honestly, I think it's 
all vehicles that have the new car smell. It has nothing to do whether it's an SUV, a car, or a truck, whether it's electric, hybrid, or gas. This is happening across the full lineup. Now, the good news is that the concentration of VOCs decreases over time. That strong new car smell will fade as the vehicle ages, as we all know, and as the materials finish off-gassing. In fact, most of the VOCs will significantly drop within a few months. Now, automakers are aware of the health concerns and are consistently working to reduce the amount of VOCs in new cars. They use lower emission materials and better ventilation systems to keep the air inside your vehicle cleaner. I'm sure you're asking, so now what do I do? I just bought a new car or I still have that new car smell. To reduce this toxic exposure, crack those windows to let your car off gas some of these toxins and look into non-toxic covers that can minimize skin contact with the seats and interior surfaces that can contain these flame retardants and other toxic chemicals. You can also have a professional clean the interior vehicle, just make sure they're using greener solutions. People can reduce their exposure to toxic chemicals by opening the car windows and of course parking in the shade. If you like this video, give it a like and subscribe for more videos like this one. If you have any questions or comments, I'll be happy to get involved in the conversation. You can support me by buying me a cup of coffee or just stay a little bit longer and find another way to save some money on your cell phone plan. Links for our website, social media, and the book and the podcast are all down in the description. I'm Lauren Fix. Thank you so much for watching. Have you ever thought, why in the world is my wireless bill so darn high? What are we paying all this money for? Speed, coverage, data, access to 5G, unlimited talk and text, mobile hotspots? We are partnering with Mint Mobile. Mint Mobile offers all of these features for as low as $15 per month. They're reimagining the wireless shopping experience and made it easy and online. No stores, no salespeople, just huge direct to you savings. Why should you pay more when you have access to premium wireless? Mint Mobile runs on the nation's largest 5G network. Whether you use your phone to watch YouTube, listen to podcasts or play games, you get the same speed and performance as the big guys while connecting to Mint's network. How hard is it to switch your service? Big Wireless wants you to think it's hard, but switching to Mint is super easy. Thanks to digital e-SIM cards, which most phones now have, you can sign up and activate immediately right on your phone from the comfort of your home. And if your phone doesn't have an e-SIM, Mint will ship you a new SIM card for free. Just go to trymintmobile.com slash Lauren Fix, also linked in the description down below, to get premium wireless for $15 a month.